I'm very happy to be joined today on Primetime Local News by Dr. Raf Saeed. Dr. Saeed is back practicing in the border city and Raf, a lot of people happy to see your smiling face back uh, in the city and of course back on television. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. We want to talk a little bit about COVID-19 because obviously that has been a, a big issue uh, over the past few months here. And one thing that I think people don't realize is that those people who are considered recovered from COVID doesn't actually mean that there are no more symptoms, that there are no problems whatsoever. We're seeing some people, and I guess they're being referred to as long haulers, that have continuous symptoms. Can you tell me a little bit about uh, that and, and what happens when you know, you're actually supposedly recovered from this condition? Well, that's one thing that has not been studied yet. Uh, when you're recovered, what does that mean? Uh, I've known of a few cases and many on television have been reported where people have da been damaged for life, uh, whether it's uh, damage to their pancreas and they develop diabetes, whether they have an amputation of their limbs, uh, whether they have liver failure, kidney failure, uh, chronic bowel problems. Uh, this disease is not understood yet. Uh, and there are no real experts on either uh, the yes side or the no side. So we're still learning a lot about this disease and I think there's a lot more to learn. So what do you say, Raf, to the people who keep referring to this as just a flu and oh, you have it for a couple weeks and then it's gone? Well, you know, uh, just an advanced country like the United States has more than 170,000 deaths reported. Now, there's many people who died of a heart attack also who were just, just labeled as a heart attack and never were classified as COVID because they were taken straight to wherever the, the funeral home and whatsoever. Um, it's again, um, because we don't understand the disease and we don't know enough about the disease, uh, you can't blame people for saying it's kind of overblown because even the communication that we get um, is kind of spotty. Um, I have to refer to Governor Cuomo of New York where his communication was very concise and, and very descriptive, uh, which is why New York, in, in spite of the whole rest of the United States, um, is, has very few cases considering its population. I think in Canada, we have done a good job of controlling um, and keeping the lid on COVID, but I would like to see uh, more frequent communication as to the problems that can be caused by this disease. Now, what about a city like Lloydminster, Dr. Saeed? You know, we are a population of about 32,000 and you include the surrounding area. And I know that some people have been saying, well, you know, we're a smaller center and we're probably not gonna see as many cases, but you know, one case or 20 case, I, I think it's basically all the same, right? The risk is still the same? The risk is still the same. Look at what happened in New Zealand. They had zero cases for 120 days. And then all of a sudden, three popped up. So we have to be vigilant. So I've, I've, I'm uh, proposing that we stay safe, but we stay alert. Um, we need to constantly monitor our surroundings. We need to be cautious of the bubble we have and be aware if the bubble is enlarged. And if it is enlarged, we need to know who else is in our bubble. Now, what about masks, Dr. Saeed? Obviously, the kids getting ready to go back to school here. Do you think that masks are effective uh, for kids and just for people in general? And is, is it going to be kind of tough to keep these, these kids from not getting coronavirus when they are in school? Current information is that the two best prevention are masks and one two meters distancing. Um, that would go a long way. There are all kinds of theories that masks do and don't prevent. Uh, but the bottom line is, if you wear a mask, the spread of your um, uh, 
nasal secretions or your your RNA uh, is the distance it can travel is limited. So it's it's more you're wearing the mask not to protect yourself but to protect others. And what do you say, Dr. Saeed, to the parents who are very concerned about sending their kids back to school in September? What are some of the things that they should be considering now and thinking about, and especially those parents that may have kids that have some special needs or, or that have some conditions, uh, you know, like an asthma or something like that, that makes them at a higher risk of, of catching COVID-19? I think those parents have a right uh, to be concerned and those parents must uh, perhaps make alternate arrangements to continue the education of their children. Uh, I, I cannot emphasize uh, it's because of our lack of knowledge of this disease that we have so many different view, viewpoints and theories. Uh, and of course, initially, uh, even the experts um, were and now admit they were wrong uh, because they assumed that this disease will, will just um, uh, go like any other flu. Uh, this is a dreadful disease and I think parents whose children are immunocompromised, asthma or, or other conditions, diabetes and the elderly people, people with diabetes uh, cannot relax yet. They have to stay safe, stay alert. I repeat myself, stay safe, stay alert. Okay, thank you, Dr. Sayin. And just one last question for you. I know there's been concern about a second wave popping up, especially when kids get back to school and you know they're more in, in close quarters together and everybody's trying to get back to some sort of a normal. Do you think that come September, October, we are going to see this, this second wave? I hope not if we are vigilant. And that is, that is important. We have to be vigilant. The school authorities have to take all the precautions. And let's not forget frequent washing of hands. Um, as important as hand sanitizers is the frequent washing of hands. And, and that is vitally important because that is also known uh, to reduce the spread of the disease. Uh, and, and that's no, a no-brainer. All right, well, we thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. I know you already have a busy schedule being back, but we really appreciate it. And as you said, you know, there's just so much that's unknown about this disease that uh, we appreciate you taking the time and, and hope we can speak with you again soon as, as things update and as things change. Thank you. I, I'm speaking not as an expert, but as somebody who has had a bit of a few patients with this disease and who've been left with lasting uh, effects. All right, thank you so much, Dr. Saeed. Thank you very much. Take care, Stacey. Bye-bye.